All right, we've got the moon in Virgo and she is blooming full early tomorrow morning. Uh, so we got a full moon at 4.30 a.m. Pacific. We've got, oh, I forgot to do my goal. Let's do the goal. Um, do, 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 do. Yeah, we got Saturn stationing into Pisces tomorrow. Ingressing into Pisces, I should say. I'm still really tired from the weekend. How are you guys doing? I taught like three workshops this weekend. I I may have girl bossed a little too close to the sun. Hello, hello. Good evening. Good evening. So we've got the big old full moon at 4.30 a.m. Pacific, 7.30 a.m. Eastern tomorrow, March 7th. And about an hour later, we've got Saturn sliding into Pisces. I, wor I worked all weekend, too. Today was my... Uh, usually, I take Sunday and Monday off, or at least, you know, I might teach for an hour on Sunday, and then I take the rest of the day off. <laughs> no. No. Today today is my day off, but I always end it with, like, a live stream. But well, not always, but a lot of times. Get it started. So, good evening. Yeah. You just became a patron. Oh, my God. Thank you so much. I'm glad you love it. Thank you, Butterfly. Welcome. Did you come into the Discord? Make sure you come into the Discord. It's popping. Come in, say hi. Don't be shy. I love creating community. It's a great place to share resources. We do everything from share recipes. You know, it's all astrology related because astrology reflects life, you know. So thank you so much for your support. It helps me do all some of the fun stuff like the podcast and get the month ahead forecasts out and the horoscopes and the crunch reports, which I give you guys, I keep patrons up to date on the crunch reports, but I also give astrological information. You guys don't want to miss those. Those are, those are, come into the discord. Come say hi. Come say hi. It's a great group. So yeah, you caught up on the podcast for the month ahead. Oh, great. So glad. There was even more details in that Pluto workshop. That was, I had so much fun teaching that Pluto workshop. It was great. I don't know if I'm going to put it up yet, like put it up for sale. It, it went out to everybody, but I, I don't, I'm not sure if I'm going to do that or not. I'm deciding. So I might, but it's really only for the two months it's in Aquarius here in, in, uh, 2023. So by the way, guys, if you keep seeing that, that people are saying, oh, you know, Pluto's moving into Aquarius until 2044. No, it's sliding back and forth. It's going into Aquarius. It's popping back into Capricorn. And it's doing that a couple of times before it ingresses into Aquarius for good in November of 2024. So we're getting these sneak peeks. And I think it's a very gentle ingress in some ways. I like that it's going in and coming out and going, it's kind of like we're being massaged into a new kind of energy. And so, um, cause Pluto, Pluto's pretty heavy hitting energy. And when it moves into a sign that is a big, it, it represents a big release of energy. Same like Pluto, uh, you know, Saturn tomorrow, that's going to be a really weird day, you know, especially, especially with the full moon happening right before it. Cause this is a very active full moon. Um, I saw somebody saying this was like the biggest full moon for releasing in like a decade. And I'm like, uh, except that full moons are always for releasing always, but this one has a very specific thing about the release. So it's a great place to release your blocks to using your intuition, great place to release blocks for self-criticism, a great way to embrace your connection to your own source, spirit, your guides, etc. Whatever you believe, okay, you have to remember your faith is your own. And the thing about Saturn and Pisces is it's really easy um, to kind of fall into misguided leadership if you're not solid in your own core, your own core faith, okay? Um, there was a lot of cults in the mid-90s. Um, it was very, very interesting. So... Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. All of our frequencies are being tuned. That's why I did the full moon workshop last night and we did a guided meditation. I channel those meditations. So I give the astrological information and then I channeled it, the meditations. I never know what's going to happen in those meditations, what visuals will come up. You know, it, it's, it was really powerful though. So 
there was there was some some shifts. So what what the information I got as I processed it too, because again I don't know. So am I going to have another workshop soon? Um, I will be having full moon workshops every month this year with a ceremony and a guided meditation. Each one's going to be different for the energy of that full moon because each of our new moons and full moons have some very interesting energy signatures regarding change. So these full moon workshops are to help with a gentle release and either, you know, it's to help you manage the energy better because each full moon is preceding other astrological events. So there we go. But your Saturn is in Aries. Okay. I'm not sure what you mean by that. So I, I want you guys to know if you're new here, I can't, I don't read very well with my, my, my eyes are tired at this time of the day. It knocked out your fridge. Oh no. Right. Yeah. But, and I'm going to be doing some other astrology classes later on. You're very welcome. So you're, you have a Saturn in Aries. Absolutely. That's your natal Saturn. So let me address that. Your natal Saturn doesn't change. It's, it's there. It's your Saturn. Saturn keeps moving though. Saturn keeps moving. So you might have been born between like what, 96 and 98, just roughly. So if you have Saturn in Aries, so you don't have to worry about it. Your, your Saturn return is a couple years away. Saturn returns are not a three-year period, by the way. First of all, Saturn never spends three years in a sign. It spends two and a half years in its orbit. So it can't be there for three years. Second of all, um, in the Hellenistic astrology, they didn't pay attention to orbs because they didn't have the math to pay attention to orbs. So they focused more generally. They didn't really lean into returns. That was something that was further developed with more advanced mathematics um, in the Islamic empire. Okay. So let's not be Islamic phobic. Okay. Um, there, there's a lot of history because human beings have been studying astrology for a really, really long time. So there's, it progresses. So the thing that Hellenists used was like perfections because they couldn't really calculate the orbs in the same way we do now using the mathematics that were developed like in the late 900s, early 1000s. <clears throat> so things progress over time. And and so I see a lot of misinformation, like people like get a half truth and kind of run with it, but don't do any investigation. But there's actually like a lot of, I went and I was looking at the history of the mathematics because understanding the math is essential to being a really, really good astrologer because it involves mathematics. Now, if you would have told me 40 years ago that I'd be researching the history of math, I would have gone like, nice try. Um, because... I'm, I'm dis, I have dyscalculia. <laughs> so, and I'm dysgraphic. Um, but I do the, those calculations in my head. Like there's like a heads up display. Like once I understand how things are moving, then I have like this internal image that I can pluck around. And so if you've ever had a reading with me and the camera's been on, then you've seen me stop and I go like dead quiet. Well, while my face is like this, which isn't always very inviting, I know. It's my thinking face. I might even do this. That is also my thinking face. I think a lot. That's what these lines are for. They're not from frowning. They're from squinting, trying to see, and from thinking. And I'm thinking about how things are moving. And so, so anyway, so you've got your Saturn. And Saturn itself continues moving. So a Saturn return is just for the time that Saturn comes exact to the degree and minute it is in your chart. It forms a chart. It's a divinatory chart. Um, the process happens while it's moving in, you know, while it's in orb. Okay, so that can be like six months, but it never takes longer than that. You probably have other transits. So a lot of people who had their Saturns and Capricorns had a bumpy ride because they had other planets in Capricorn that were being aspected by other planets, including Pluto. Okay, so you can't always just use your experience as the baseline. Okay, it, it doesn't it doesn't work. It's a starting place, but it's not the end place. Okay, so anyway, hey guys, yeah. Well, actually, I'm really looking forward to this full moon. It's a great full moon to blow through the blocks. If you guys didn't hear my latest podcast episode, episode 11 dropped today, early hours of the morning. I explained how to use the full moon energy and the Saturn and Pisces energy 
to kind of like ground your faith, ground your spirituality as per how you believe. Like, I, I don't care what you believe. You don't, you and I don't need to believe the same way, but you need to know what you believe strongly and firmly in your own truth. So you can't be taken advantage of by people with like not necessarily great intentions. Cause again, mid nineties, there were a fair amount of cults. Yup. It was a time. It was a time. I tell you. Um, yeah. Well, what do you mean by Saturn in the first house? Are you talking about a transit or are you talking about your natal planet? So one of the things when we're talking astrology, it's really important to indicate, is this your natal placement or is it a transit? And I've actually talked a lot about that on my podcast. My podcast is free, guys. It's free. I know everybody felt like I had a really short episode this time because like my last episode was two whole hours getting people ready for Pluto in Aquarius. So, oh, well, your your whole goal, if you, if, you know, I actually have Saturn classes that are recorded that are linked up in my bio that'll give you a ton more information. But just a quick note, you're meant to be learning how to be your own authority and you need to stop handing it over to other people, you know, so it's really easy to say, well, this person made me do it, or maybe you didn't have any agency as a child. But the whole goal for this lifetime is to develop your own inner authority. So yeah. Oh, it's transiting your first house. Well, now take that. You're, you're learning to stand up for yourself. Okay. So they're similar but different. They're similar but different. I love you too. Big hearts. Big hearts to you guys. Thank you for tapping the screen, guys. It helps, so that it helps us be seen. So I appreciate that. I didn't get everything done I wanted to do. Today is my day off. I got a lot of paperwork done. I still worked. <laughs> when don't I? When don't I? Actually, oh my gosh, thank you so much. I love that. I can do it this way too. Look at that. Isn't it nice our hands can make hearts and our fingers make hearts? I love that. Um, oh, well, thank you. So in April, I'm taking some time off because my mom and dad are coming out to Southern California and I'm going to hang out with them for a little bit. And then in May, I'm heading out to Wyoming to see them. So, but yeah. On nodal transit, there's, we don't want to call it a reversal. I don't know who started that, but it's really not good nomenclature in astrology. So when you're having you could just say your north node opposition it's not really a reversal that the north the north and south node are minor players they are calculation points and these are not just we shorthand it with north node and south node okay but every planet has a north and south node they're mathematical calculations they are indicators okay oh my gosh oh my god that one's so cute i haven't seen that one before they are indicators okay of of what we're here to do so sometimes when we have oh thank you sometimes when we have um the south node on our north node and vice versa because they're always a polarity so your south node and your north node are always in opposition okay because it's a nodal axis okay an axis is a line and um it they're indicators of what you came in with skill wise talent wise, et cetera, and what you're meant to learn. So some on that opposition, it's a lot of times where you have to use the old skills while learning the new skills. And you might get like some connections with people that feel familiar, et cetera. It depends on the houses. Um, but yeah, so you love my podcast. My podcast is on more than Spotify. It's all over the place. Did you know we're in the top 5% of podcasts worldwide for real? for real in any in any subject okay just by the listens and the plays and the downloads i just found this out recently and it's so exciting to me so thank you to all my patrons for supporting me and you know what i recorded on my phone in my living room how cool is that i'm laying on my couch my feet are up in the air it's like two in the morning i've finished readings i've finished the horoscopes and then i sit down there and i say it's the Awake Space Astrology Podcast. I'm Lori Rivers with you, here to help you with your inspiration to get those aspirations out into the world. And I do it every week. And I love doing it. I love helping soothe you. I love helping take the fear out of things. I love informing you. Um, I think there's way too much fear-based astrology out there. Oh my God, 
Woo hoo. Oh, I miss my owls. But yeah, um, I have a whole bunch of podcast information on Saturn and Pisces. But to run it down, this is a great time. First of all, I really want you all to go listen to episode 11 because I really go into demystifying and clarifying Saturn from a Western metaphysical position, okay? I'm not saying the Eastern is wrong, but I'm saying we should not appropriate other people's cultures, okay? It's wrong. It's theft. It is theft to appropriate other people's cultures just because we like it better. Um, that That's not okay. That's a colonizer mindset. Oh, I like that. I will take it. Let's not do that. It's not a new concept. A cultural appropriation, we've known about it for a long time. Okay? I knew about it in the 90s, and I was a young person. So it, it's not a new thought. Okay? Just like woke is not a new thought, by the way. I learned about it as a kid in the 70s. So... Obviously, there was a whole bunch of people out in fields doing kegers, not paying attention to anything else when they were growing up. But anyway, some of us were politically active. But anywho, and not nasty. But anyway, so Saturn in Pisces is a great time to ground your spirituality, to get in touch with your... Um, your intuition, learn some processes to harness it. It's a good time to change your reality, change your habits. Okay, this full moon is helping out with that. If there's some mental habits, and I talk about this on episode 11 of the Awake Space Astrology podcast, you'll find everything linked up in my bio, but you know, it's on all podcast players, the Awake Space Astrology podcast. Um, and so, and obviously it it's, awake, right? So <laughs> anywho, I do that on purpose. I try to filter people out. There's just people I'm not wanting to work with. So because they wouldn't listen anyway. So Saturn in Pisces is a time for that. Now where people will run into trouble is if they have addiction issues um, and all kinds of addiction issues. Uh, but don't manufacture those issues for yourselves. You know, if you can actually put something down, you're like, oh, I'm addicted to social media. I'm going to get rid of my accounts. If you can actually get rid of your accounts, you're not addicted to it. Okay. Addiction, actual addiction actually requires a lot of help. Um, back in the nineties, we saw a lot of, um, heroin. We lost a lot of people to it. Um, there was a backlash against heroin chic in the fashion industry. And it was disgusting. I mean, they would have these emaciated creatures. These models would be emaciated. I mean, you could count their ribs and just huge dark circles. And that was supposed to be chic. And there was just a massive, massive pushback against that. Um, some great music came out of Saturn and Pisces in the nineties, like really great, like really good, really good R&B, really good soul, really good dance music, really good alternative rock. And I think we'll have some of that again. I think people are going to push against kind of the standardized over mechanical auto-tune world and get into some real musicality, some really cool art. I think there's going to be more pushback in fashion, um, working on more body positivity. I think it's a great time to anchor things um, that... Um, push inclusion. And I think people who feel like they're on the fringe are going to get a little bit more solid in their organizations and banding together. Um, I think we're already seeing some of that. Um, what you really, really, really want to do is push for, like, if you see somebody doing the right thing, don't just sit there and like a video. Like if it's a politician doing the right thing in like a local legislator, le legislature, um, there's a lady in Nebraska and she's, I can't remember if she's a senator or a rep, but I saw a little clip from the Rachel Maddow show and she is literally holding that legislature hostage. You know, send her some love letters, you know, send her an email supporting her, Make, give a call, show the fuck up in Omaha if you're in Nebraska, support people doing the right thing. Don't just like a video. That is a very low investment. It takes no time to like a video or share a video, but actually show the fuck up because you need to. You have to. These these are very crunchy times. Um, but yeah. Yeah. The music in the 90s was totally awesome. I, you know, I think we knew it was good, but it was, we didn't realize how much we'd miss it. Although, I was in the grocery store the other day. Speaking of Saturn and Pisces, 
I was in the grocery store yesterday in between workshops because Malcolm needed his food and I needed some munchies and they were playing the bare naked ladies. I was like, whoa, wait, wait, wait. I understood the early 80s music, but they're dipping into the mid 90s with the bare naked ladies. What the hell? You know, I'm like, come on. <laughs> Talk about. Okay, I'm glad they're not still playing Elvis, all right? But still. Uh. But yeah. Why is it going to be hard with people for addictions? Because Saturn represents um, consequences. Okay. And it's usually, what I'm talking about is substances. I would also very much caution against psychedelics. I know it's really popular right now in spiritual circles, but you're a human being and you're designed to connect with your source. You don't need substances to do it. Um, I, I teach that. I can teach people how to open and connect and stay grounded. I do that in my meditations every single month. People end up very blissed out. There is no need. And I think it's very dangerous to alter your mind, okay? Especially if you think you know better and you can just dose yourself. Um, that's very different if handled by a medical doctor, okay? There are treatments that are handled by medical professionals. That is a different story. But I'm talking about just because little wannabe shaman Bobby has decided he's going to be the next guru and he's going to hand you this little magic mushroom. You know what? You don't need it. You can literally have those same kinds of open mind experiences on your own with training and safely that do not leave you with lasting psychosis. Okay. Cause not everybody gets it, but enough people do. And it's a very, very worrisome thing to me. And there will be consequences. You might see things laced with things you don't, you know, you don't want to take, you want to be careful. Okay. I have been involved in the spiritual world. I don't like to say community because I think it's lots of pockets. I don't think it's one big community, but I've been involved since the eighties. Okay. I've seen some really great people get sucked in and chewed up and burned out by that stuff. So you have to be very, very careful. Okay. Don't just do it because so-and-so said it was okay. All right. So there's that. But there's also people, you know, we do have the fentanyl issue. We do have controlled substances that are kind of running rampant. Um, and these are very dangerous. Okay. And um, sadly, during the last Saturn in Pisces, um, the love of my life, the true love of my life, but the children of my father, but the father of my children, the children of my father, the father of my children, um, he was, he ended up working in uh, investment banking. We'd gone to college together. You know, we did the college thing. I went and got my job before he graduated. He finished up. We got married. We went um, to live in Bahrain. That's where he was from. I'd already been out to visit. This was not a, nothing was a big surprise for me. Alcohol was not illegal there. And there's a difference between being legal and not illegal, but it was not illegal there. And there were other drugs running around. And he got caught up in that very hard and fast life. And when Saturn was in Pisces, I'll never forget the night. Um, he'd been out every night for like two weeks, which was not usual for us. You know, we'd go out on the weekend, but we had a little baby at this time. And I remember telling him, I was like, you know, you've been out every night for the last two weeks. Why don't you just stay home? Why don't you just, just, just stay home tonight? I'm getting worried about you. And he was like, he gave me some lip and I was like, I just have this feeling that if you walk out that door tonight, you're going to, it's a decision you can't walk back from easily. Please stay home. You know, and we were young. We were really young. This is before both our Saturn returns. And um, he gave me one hard look and walked out that door. And um, it, it did not end up well. It ended up reinforcing the addictions. And in that country, I could not get him the help I wanted to get him. It was complicated, okay. Um, you know, you, you don't wanna lose people you love. I mean, and the worst thing, not only did we lose him eventually, he lost us, okay. So, um, you know, and it was ugly, it was, it was ugly. You know, and I, it, but it also gave me the opportunity to work on myself and accepting myself and loving myself and looking at what, and it's a long time ago, 
But thank you. It was a long time ago. You know, we we are able to live on. You know, just when you think you can't breathe again, just when you think life is so hard, you'll never make it through, you take another step. So, yeah. What year was that? That was 1994. That was when Saturn was in Pisces the last time. Mm -hmm. It dipped in briefly May through June of 93, and then it popped in again in 94 for its full ingress. Mm -hmm. But yeah. Oh, big hugs. Well, listen to my latest podcast. Okay, listen to my latest podcast. There's a lot of similar energy expressed in that podcast because I recorded that while I was still um, in a channeling mindset. So it, it, there's similar energy you'll, you'll, you'll benefit from. Okay. Oh, I love origami. Thank you. Yeah. So, yeah. You know, again... And and he wasn't punished for his addictions. It's just, it was a consequence. It was a consequence of his own DNA, his own issues, his own, but it was he wasn't punished, you know? And I would never want to think that about him. He had consequences. Yeah. So, but yeah. Yeah. It doesn't always lead a rise to escapism for everyone. It can be actually a grounding of your spirituality as well. We have to be really careful with blanket statements because there's many ranges of consciousness that get expressed in these. Um, but yeah, there could be some really good fantasy movies. Like I said, music of all kinds, video games could rock it. And we'll probably see more with virtual reality and see some advancements in there, some of the deep fake stuff. Um, I don't think all of that is negative. I think it's going to create a pushback to looking more into handmade, more organic and natural. I think people will start to value that. But I, I don't think it's necessarily, I think, you know, Maybe it's just because I'm not a sighted person. Like I have very low vision and I've always had been visually impaired, but I think people who are sighted are really silly and overly attached to what they see with their eyes. Because if you would listen more, you would hear so much more. Like how many people in a city say they need to go back to nature? I can walk right downtown LA and I'll see the hawks and the crows and all manner of flowers and plants. But that's because I'm paying more attention. Most people are just in their heads doing their thing. So what's the distractions? What is the illusion? You know, most people thought the nine to five grind was how life was. That was a big fucking illusion, wasn't it? Pluto and Capricorn took that shit out. It ain't coming back full bore ever again. So I think I think it's important to like practice your meditation. I think Saturn and Pisces is great. That was when I really started getting very very serious about aligning my energies. Um, again, I had meta I'd studied metaphysics in a lot of different ways before the '90s, but I started getting serious with it, and that's when you know at the end of that transit, like '95, is when astrology slammed into me, and I gained a spiritual discipline. And speaking of North Nodes, that's when Saturn was on my my north node and so that was you know kind of railroading me into my path and i wasn't all that enthused about it i didn't you know i didn't set out to be an astrologer i actually set out to debunk it so you know healthy skepticism is always important so yeah yeah so what did i miss here there you go Oh, big hugs. You're finishing up your second Saturn return or you're having your Saturn return? Yeah, 94. That was a tough year. Oh, you're sober and you're having crazy cravings. So it's just kind of a time to be really mindful about it and really embrace your sobriety. You know, get support. Don't do, don't try to do it alone. You know, there's no shame in getting support. You know, and there's no shame in in having had addictions or if you have them. I think shame is such a dangerous, dangerous thing. Um, it prevents so much. Like 
that was the big issue with my beloved is they were afraid, like his whole family was afraid of how it would make the family look if he got help in his own country. And they wouldn't let him, like I ended up leaving eventually and coming back to the States and I was trying to get him into rehab over here and he wouldn't do it, you know? So, but we all, we all have our own paths too, you know? So we all have our own paths. So yeah, it was sad. It was sad, but you know, he's around, you know, he, he, death is, is, is an illusion as well. So, you know, our physical bodies definitely keel over, but the rest of us, that doesn't die. So, but yeah. We can see addictions in the chart, yeah. But you have to be very, very careful because you see, I have placements that somebody who wasn't very experienced would say, oh, you have addictions. And not to substances, you know, maybe working, maybe maybe throwing myself into my work in the world, but not not substances or food, those things, right? So you have to be very, very careful, right? Oh, you needed that? Oh, you lost a loved one. Oh, I'm so sorry. It's hard to lose people in the physical, isn't it? It really is. It's really hard to lose people in the physical. It is. But they're all around us, you know. I felt him pass in 2009. Um, and kind of had an energetical experience with that. Um, and sure enough, five minutes later, the phone rang and I was told. And um, took me, I never got to, I didn't get to grieve until 2016 because I had to walk other people through it. So yeah, your mom in 2012, yeah. You know, my mom's mom passed away when she was eight. And every year on the anniversary, she's just sad. And sometimes I always try to call her on that day. And she'll be sniffly and she'll say, I just feel dumb. It's been so long. I'm like, she's your mom, mom. How can you not miss her? You're never too old to, you know. And it gave me a lot of empathy for my mom because she didn't always make great parenting decisions. But, you know, how do you when you didn't, your North Star wasn't there, you know. So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Casey is the best, right? Casey helped you out. That's great. Yeah. Casey's, my mods are the best. Casey, Jennifer, Rita. And on Discord, we've got, we've got Shane and, and Kathy, Sister Luck, Mackenzie, McDubbs. Great, great mods. Great astrologers, great mods. I'm really, really privileged in having so much wonderful support. And I don't take that for granted in the least. So, yeah. Oh, I'm so sorry you went through hospital with your mom. It's only been 12 weeks. Oh, big hugs, honey. Big hugs. Oh, I'm sorry. I can guarantee you when my mom passes, I will be an absolute wreck. Even though I see energy, even though I can talk to dead people, I will still be a wreck, okay? We can know and we can experience, but we're still human, right? And we're used to calling people up on the phone and we're used to having chit chats or having an argument, right? Yeah. So big hugs. I'm sorry, honey. But yeah, you wrote her a letter today. That's beautiful. That's good. Listen for her answers. Listen for them in songs. Listen to them in like if she liked different kinds of art or maybe in the grocery store there's something on sale and it's something you really like to eat maybe it's something she used to cook you cook for you um there'll be little things there's little gifts that we get from our beloveds when they pass you know i swear my 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 beloved set me up with my boyfriend i am convinced of it because the first time I went to meet this man, almost seven years ago, I had on my uh, Spotify, and I just had it on a random, 
you know, just play music. You know, it was like 90s music or something. No, it was 90s music. I heard songs I hadn't heard in 20, 25 years. These were not the most common popular songs. Okay. And they were all of our songs. And I was like, what are you doing? I'm like, you don't get to go on this date. <laughs> and there was something very special about the date. But yeah, it was really sweet. So you never know. And, and the, the messages can come in the most subtle of ways. It's not always in neon, you know, but yeah. Oh, your mom sent you your two best friends. I love that. It can be a very hard thing to watch. Indeed. It can be a really hard thing to watch. Absolutely. Yeah. And so learning now, learning to sort through fact and fiction, learning to sort through your own truth and sometimes the lies we tell ourselves. That was a big one for me when Saturn was in Pisces in the nineties, because I had made some illusions for myself. I wanted to have a family that was so tight and so cool. I wanted my kids to have like the best dad. I wanted my kids, you know, to have this really cool experience that I didn't necessarily get it. And so I would blinder, I would, you know, codependency, I fought for it, you know, all of that. And it, I had to let go because Pisces is about letting go and surrender. I had to stop martyring myself and, and, and trust that everything would work out. And it did. Everybody has their own path. We don't get to force other people's paths. And you really can't get this life wrong. You really can't, okay? It's really not a punishment to be on Earth. I really don't like that kind of thinking. We have a one in 400 trillion shot of being here. It is a little tiny flying rock in a vast universe, right? So I do have a filter on right now because I am tired and did not want to put on makeup. Yep. And I have to look at this face. I don't want to see my eyeballs down to here. So, yep. I love filters. They save my skin. I hate putting on makeup. So. Will it be safe to fly in May? It just depends on your chart, hun. Um, there's a day I would prefer people didn't travel too much. Um, because it, it's it's kind of a very volatile day. That's May 16th. So I'll be talking about that more on my podcast. Um, do I believe in an afterlife? Yes and no. I don't really believe in a physical place. I think it just depends on perceptions and the beliefs. I think we might initially, like as we understand our reality has changed, we might see something different. Um, but I really just kind of believe that our energy reorganizes into other physical existence you know so i look for things more from a quantum level so may 16th is the day i said not to travel somebody asked about me i was responding to them I, it's a day i mean if you have to you have to but it's just a day i would avoid it especially if you have like um early planets or, or houses with, um, well, everybody has these houses. You'll have, you know, zero degrees Taurus, zero degrees Aquarius. Luckily Pluto's retrograde that day. So it goes retrograde in April. Um, I've talked a lot about the full moon on my podcast. It is a huge release. Um, all full moon, all full moon, Let's see if I can talk. I'm so tired. I taught three workshops this weekend. So, and a reading. Three workshops and a reading. And I did the podcast. <laughs> um, but yeah. So, the the deal with um, the full moon is it's a time to release blocks. It's a really good time to release, like, leaning into your inner critic. And I really, really talked about, um, I really, really talked about, um, how to do that in, in the last podcast episode, the 11th. So I already said May 16th, 
So you guys can help people out in the comments, but, and, and it's just one particular day and it's really if your third, um, third house and sixth house have um, Taurus or Aquarius those days. And, you know, so those of you who don't have third house, sixth house, Aquarius, Taurus, either direction, don't worry about it as much. So yeah, thank you. But you can also listen to the Awake Space. Oh, thank you guys. We're halfway to the goal. I love that little ding. Um, you can listen to the Awake Space Astrology Podcast. It's on all the big podcast players, Apple, Google Play, Spotify. It's linked up in my bio. I do weekly podcasts where I keep you informed on the energy and the astrology and give tips. So, yeah. Oh, I clean with you. See, I talked about that on the podcast last night. I was like, hey, you can, I'll do the dishes with you. I help you fold your laundry. I do your commute with you. I love that I help so many people get things done. <laughs> um, sometimes people tune in. I'm thinking about starting another podcast where all I do is read bedtime stories. So, because so many people tune into my lives or they tune into my podcast because they need to sleep. And I'm like, I felt bad about the last couple ones where I was giving a lot of predictions because I was like, oh, those aren't going to help people sleep. But um, I want people to have a heads up. So, but yeah. Yeah, enjoy it. Yeah. And thank a patron because the patrons make it possible, which is super cool. I'm so honored to have so many, so many wonderful patrons. And um, I try to give as much love back as I can. So, but yeah. <clears throat> it's a time when Saturn goes over our sins. It's happened, you know, depends on how old you are. Um, but when Saturn comes over our sins, it's just time to really look at how we expend our energy, gain a little bit more discipline, get a little more organized, that kind of thing. Don't give your energy away. Learn better boundaries. So... You wish you had my energy? <laughs> I wish I had my energy from 10 years ago. <laughs> 20 years ago would have been better. Um, it, I have a lot of discipline. So even if I'm really, really, really tired, I can get things done. I just chug at it. Speaking of Saturn, I have Saturn in Taurus and it's not aspected and it's in my sixth house. So I just go boom, boom, boom. Yeah. Yeah. So you're 20 today. Happy birthday. And so, yeah, it's about learning boundaries, not letting people, like, not just, like, if people kind of, like, you know how you just kind of get sucked into stuff? You're just kind of like, and you're like, how did that happen? And people are like, how did that happen? And you're like, I have no idea. Because you really don't. So this is helping you build boundaries. Saturn can be our good friend. Saturn isn't always bad stuff, okay? It is, it's just the reason, one of the reasons Saturn was considered a malefic is because people don't like structure, except they do. People love to know what's coming. That's why you guys are all asking me, right? You'd be like, I don't like authorities. What's going to happen? <laughs> so, yeah. You're 33 today. Okay, so now in three months, you want to have a 33 and a third birthday. And that is a joke because of records. Right. I did that when I was 33 and a third. I had a 33 and a third party. <laughs> there you go. You're 43. Happy birthday. Look at all those birthdays. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Oh. Right? You can pretend. You know, my other favorite birthday song is, it's from Alice in Wonderland. And when I was a little kid, I thought this was the best concept in the world. There are 365 unbirthdays, unbirthdays every year. And I was like, what? We can celebrate unbirthdays? Because <laughs> I love birthdays. I always have. So even before I was an astrologer, I was like the keeper of birthdays and death days. Like, I could tell you everybody in my family. And I could as a kid. So I, I obviously, just like my astrology teacher said, even though I didn't believe him, I was kind of born to be an astrologer. But yeah. Oh, go listen to my podcast. Saturn is going to be awesome. I'm really, actually, 
Today I had some of the weirdest tech snafus and I was like, Saturn, I know you're in the very last degrees and minutes of Aquarius, but can we not fuck up my laptop today? It was easily fixed, but it was just like, like I'm on with Asus, I'm like tech support. Um, hello, hello, how do I fix this? So. I've been talking about good stuff, honey. It's not all bad. Oh, good for you. Buy in a bigger place. I love to hear that. That's great. Yeah, Saturn moving into Pisces is good astrological news. It's changing the energy. We needed it to change, right? Yeah, Asus is a good brand. I used to work in hardware, so I'm kind of picky. I got it on sale in December. So, but yeah. So, um, but yeah, there's lots of good news. It's not all bad news. Don't listen to all the people on TikTok. 90% of them aren't even real astrologers. Most of them are just repeating what they hear. And I saw this other person I don't remember who they're called. I just blocked them because I, I'm like, oh my God, not another one. But this, you know, cross it, little blonde chick, I can help you remove your karma. Don't listen to those people. That's bullshit. I talked about stuff like that on my podcast. Don't, 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 don't. One, if you are not from a culture that has that belief, please don't steal their beliefs. That's a colonized thing to do. Okay. Saturn gives us discipline. It can give us drive and ambition, and there's nothing wrong with having ambition. Ambition and greed are not the same thing, okay? We can ambitiously want to help people. Our ambitious goals can be to be of service, okay? Um, our ambitious goal can to be the best version of ourselves we can be at any moment in time, right? So, yeah. Oh, thank John Edward. Oh, John is so sweet. He is just a wonderful man. I, John is just a very, very good person. And I've had the pleasure of getting to know him. And I can safely call him a friend today. And he feels like a, a long lost cousin, to be honest. So, and if you ever get a chance to go to one of John's live events, go. He is absolutely accurate and remarkable. Um, very, very talented, very, very talented, which I knew I saw the TV show, but you know, watching it live, I can see the energy. So I was just talking to him about that the other day. You know, I was like, oh my God, watching, watching the energy was amazing and kudos to him. I couldn't, I, I couldn't do what he does. The, you know, being in a room full of grieving people would be a lot for me. Um, that's why I use astrology. Astrology is kind of a nice buffer for me because I am highly intuitive. And so it just gives a little, a little filter so that I'm not, and it's also, I will do live events, but not this year, at least so far. Um, I'm thinking more like maybe 2025. I'm not sure about 2024. Um, pretty sure about 2025. And, um, I can do a group but one-on-ones are too much because I'm very, yeah. You came in from John Edward? Oh, you guys. Thank you. Thank him. I love John. I love John. Is that 177? We just had 177. Why so far out for live events? My own personal transits. My own personal transits. I have other things I need to do and build before I do live events. So... So there's some stuff I have to do. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 Otherwise I would. Um, but also because, oh, it is 7-Eleven. <gasps> oh my God. Oh my God. That's the cutest little hedgehog. Um, I, I love meeting people and I love teaching. Um, I really do. And I love doing like group experiences, but, um, 
What do those mean? To me, it's just a sign to keep going. To me, it's encouragement from my guides. I don't use the angel number descriptions. It's okay if people do. But for me, and just the way my intuition works, it's just a message of encouragement. Keep going, keep going, keep going. So 7-7 seven, seven is when that it's just, it's like you're on a roll. Keep going. Don't, don't stop. So that one is for me. So, and the 7 is just, it, it, to me, it's a little cosmic joke as well. It's like, keep going, keep it light, keep it going, keep it light. We got you, you know? So, but yeah. Oh man, you lived in a apartment 7-Eleven? That's cool. Right? Yeah. Yeah, it'll be a really different Saturn vibe. Tomorrow, time is going to feel... So like when Saturn moves into Pisces tomorrow, it really will feel very surreal. Um, it happens early, early, early in the morning. And... So like the full moon's at 4.30 a.m. And then like an hour later, Saturn slides into Pisces. And if you're still asleep, like if you're on the West Coast and you're still asleep, you may have like funkalicious dreams. They will be like, <laughs> they could be very odd. Or you might wake up kind of groggy and, and be like, whoa, you know, not enough coffee in the day. It, it will feel very different because the energy of Saturn in Aquarius is like really sharp energy. It's very... Think fiber optic cables. And this is more like. The energy changes. So it's very, very different. I'm kind of excited about it, to be honest. It's, it's you know, because I wasn't an astrologer on the first part of the Saturn and Pisces transit um, back in the 90s. And then I was just a baby astrologer as as it moved through the end of Saturn and Pisces. So I'm really interested to observe it as an experienced astrologer now and just kind of pay attention to what's going on. It's really fascinating. So. Oh, that's cool. I love that. Somebody, uh, Jenny Christine has an extra VIP ticket for John Edward on Sunday in Wisconsin. In Wisconsin. Man, I'd take her up on it because that's, or them, I'm not sure. But I love John Edward. Love it. You're excited. I love that, Christ Gable. How are you, my love? You're looking good these days. You're doing great. Um, Yeah, it's really good for Saturn and Pisces, moon, or for the moon and Pisces. It'll help you get some emotional boundaries, some some structure, some healing, um, again, it might be a little bumpy while you learn those lessons, but you'll get them, especially the older we are. If we're on a second run, <laughs> it makes it a little easier than the first time. Cause you know, the first time you're on those, that Saturn cycle, you're just figuring crap out. That's all you're doing. And the world's coming at you and you're like, Oh my God, what do I do? Help, help. And then as you gain a little, that's why middle-aged people in general, not all there's fools. Okay. I'm not going to lie. There's people my age who are total fools does not give you automatic wisdom points. However, if somebody's been doing your work, the work, you can always tell, right? You can always tell who's done the work. All right. You want to listen, like some of you younger people, you really do want to listen to some of the older metaphysical crowd out here that don't have big audiences, but they know what they're doing. Okay. Like my friend, Nicole Cormier, the, the numerology lady, fan fucking tastic. Um, Oh crap. Can I remember everybody I'm thinking of right now? There's there's a really cool witch. She's a bubby. I like her. And I can't remember her name, but she's like she's a she's a really cool grandma. Um Grammy Druid. She knows her shit. You know. Whether you, whether you like or don't like knows her shit. So listen to some of the older people who've been around. Because we've seen all this shit be fads before. It's all what goes around comes around again. And we've heard all the arguments. And we know how to start the fights. And we know how to end them. Um, and it's just, it's it's fascinating to watch it come back. Because, yeah. So. Yeah, there's so much more. And I teach it in my podcast. I teach on my, um, I teach workshops. I've got a Patreon. And, and. Trust me, even at the lower levels, like at five bucks a month, you still get a lot. I give a lot of resources to my patrons as a baseline. And then I add in 
workshops and things at the higher levels. But my goal is to give people reliable information that gives you a process to self-investigate for yourself what's your truth and what isn't your truth. Okay. And, and that's a sign of somebody who's an actual teacher. They're not going to be like, there's only one way. There's only one way. Now, when it comes to astrology, there's processes. And I will, I will get snippy about the math. I will get snippy about like making sure you got your history straight, that kind of thing. Um, but as far as how you interpret, it, there's, there's a window where you get to riff. Okay. And when it comes to your own personal spirituality, your own connection to source, spirit, God, goddess, whatever, that's up to you. That's up to you. Nobody should be telling you you're doing it wrong or right. I'm a little mystified by what passes for magic these days because so many people are like, this is the only way you can do it. I'm like, really? That's news. Unless it's close, you know, close practices are a different story, but I find it interesting. I find it funny. So I am, but I am easily amused. Just warning you. So tonight, if you want to really get ready for that full moon and Saturn moving into Pisces, tonight I take a bath or a shower. Um, and if you've got Epsom salts, you can use it as a scrub or you can just put it in the tub. Um, if you don't have either one of those things, God bless you. Get a, get a bowl of water and put some salt in there and put your feet in it um that's important you know you want to soak and release tension um have a cup of tea listen to some quiet music there's lots of great meditation music and actually john john speaking of john edward um what is his protege john john ah uh, he's also a john jonathan jonathan he just put out an an album and one of the songs is called Hope. Um, Jonathan Lewis. There we go. He just made an album called Reflections. The music is gorgeous. So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Jonathan Lewis. Got it. Thank you, guys. Yeah, he just put out an album called Reflections. Oh, thank you, Christ Gable. I I just get tickled every time I see a video you put out. So, Yeah. Yeah, okay, his album is Hope. Okay, his album is Hope. I thought it was one of the songs. So it must have been the song I was hearing was Reflections. Um, gorgeous, beautiful music. Very beautifully, very energetically aligned. Gorgeous. Definitely um, a teacher, a world server, you know. So th those of us who are world servers, oh, you listen to it today. Keep listening, my love. It, beautiful music. It's very soothing. We want to soothe ourselves tonight. And through the next week, there's a lot of bumpy energy coming up. And so we want to soothe ourselves in healthy ways. We want to be kind to ourselves. Okay. Self-love is the hardest thing to learn how to do. It's And everything in the outer world is designed to make it very difficult to do. Right. And so learning to just accept yourself. Just accept yourself. I can accept I am here right now. This is the me I am right now. I may not be where I want to be, but I'm here right now. And if you can do that, that is rudimentary. Okay, rudimentary. You don't want to fake it till you make it. Your subconscious knows you're lying. Okay, your mind will know you're trying to trick it. And it'll be like, bitch. So you want to be like, I accept me. I'm here right now. This is my right now. And I may not be where I want to be, but I'm capable of taking another step towards where the direction I want to go. I may not know everything I need to know, but I'm capable of learning it. It might take time and I'm capable of learning it. Notice you're not, it, you, you're, you're not being unrealistic, right? You're not saying I can be a jillionaire. Don't do that. That kind of hype, it just sets you up for a fall. But you can just gently hold yourself. Gently hold yourself. Yeah. Oh, you took you took a shower and ate pasta? Good for you. Yeah. There you go. There you go. Yeah. Gave yourself an amazing scalp 
massage. I love that. Oh, you just downloaded it. That's super cool. As an artist, this will be level up, up. Absolutely. As artists, as musicians, as people of service, you do. Like I said, Saturn and Pisces, at the end of it, you know, in 95, when it was on my North Node, that's when astrology came barreling at me. You know, 94, I taught my first, what I thought of as personal development class. You know, I wrote my own little book on a typewriter <laughs> and I invited people to a class at, at the Internet Cafe in Bari and it was the first one there. And um, I had, you know, people got the book and we had question, question and answer sessions and meditation and, and um, learned to quiet our mind. And the class was called Successful Thinking, Successful Living because I was really disillusioned. I had, I had managed at a really young age to do a lot of things that people said I was that were impossible. Like I'd already been, like by the time I was 24, I'd been to 23 countries, four continents. I was from a little town in Oregon. Did I join the military? No. Did my parents have money? No. <laughs> I grew up working class. Um, I worked and I made it happen for me. I learned a lot of hard lessons. Um, I escaped a lot of dangerous situations. Um, right? The type. Mine was, was very erratic. Because I don't know why, but my pinkies stand up when I type. <laughs> like, I can't use my pinkies. And it's like, so I'm drinking tea. <laughs> but yeah, type, adapt, old typewriter. Wrote out that book. And that was the beginning because I was trying to learn. I, and I invited people I thought had the answers. And everybody in that room, that was the funny part about that class. Everybody thought everybody else had the answer. And then we all found out none of us had the answer. But I did it. I'd had the degree. I traveled the world. I had the good job. I got married to the, my college sweetheart. We had a beautiful child. I, was, I don't know that I was pregnant with my second one yet. And I wasn't happy. And I was like, but I've done all the things. I ticked off all the boxes. Why? And it's because I was making other people happy. I was making other people proud of me. I was trying to prove myself. And um, that caused me to go down some really big quests of understanding. And the best thing I ever did was teach that class in 94. You know, where I just brought people together and, and it, everybody loved it. It was just, you know, it was just a really good exploration. And we all found out we all had the need to self-describe success. It's not meaningful if you're not describing it. And then astrology came at me and that became my obsession. And, um, and I learned many other things along the way, but that Saturn and Pisces was, was a time where it was uncomfortable enough both inside and outside of me, that I had to choose some directions in life. And you have to understand, even when things are a little bumpy or a little crunchy, sometimes a little painful, it's not a punishment. It's an opportunity to change direction. And sometimes we won't notice. Like, you notice how we can put it off, put it off, put it off, put it off, and then, oh shit, we have to. There's a hard deadline. That's Saturn. And the best teachers give us those things. Oh, thank you. You guys are. I really appreciate all of you. And I appreciate you giving me the opportunity to do all of this. You know, this is, I've spent my life dedicated to studying human beings, what it makes to be us having this life on this planet. I wasn't sure what the meaning of life was. And I'm, I'm pretty sure at this point, it's just to gather experiences and we come back around again and again. It's not a punishment. You know, in 2012, I had a huge awareness. I was walking across my living room. I can see it clear as day. I was walking across my living room and then this just massive download epiphany. And it was, it made sense of my life up to that point. And for the first time in my life, and I was 43 years old in 2012, I was like, oh my God. If being here, doing what I'm meant to do on an energetical, spiritual, physical level 
meant I would have to do this life all over again, I would. I wouldn't skip a thing. And I can tell you, the the five minutes before that download, if you would have told me I would have said that, I would have been like, oh, nope, I don't want to come back. Um, and so that epiphany was huge. It was huge. And I had a very, very traumatic childhood. Um, so the fact that I could be looking at it, and it's not like that trauma caused me to be here. Not at all. I'm here in spite of it. I'm in here. I'm here in spite of it. That was meant to delay progress. That was meant to, you know, sometimes some of those things they don't make us better. I was, I can I have early childhood memories. I was compassionate. I didn't need bad things to happen to me to make me more compassionate. If anything, that made me angry, you know, and bitter. And I had to unpack the anger and bitterness. Um, so there were things that kind of got in the way to bump us off track, but we get back on track. There's no doing life wrong. You can't fail this life. It's not a pass or fail experiment. And it's really easy to look at people and go, well, they're definitely failing. Oh, yeah. But it's not our place to do that. It's our place to do our job, to be ourselves, to be as aligned as we can be. And all that means is lined up like tires on a car, right? They line up. Okay, that's all that is. That's all that is, right? So you line them up, right? And then you move forward as best you can and you have to realign your tires on your car right guess what as human beings we have to realign our energy we grow we change we have experience we get worn out parts so sometimes need replacement that's part of being in a physical body so many of you blame yourselves or feel ashamed for no good cause no good cause because it's part of the cultural narratives and it's been used to control us, right? You are so loved and encouraged every moment of the day by your guides. You are so loved and so encouraged by the universe. Being in physicality is a very brave thing. And some people are here to be asleep. Some people are here to be awake. Some people are here to be assholes. That may be their cosmic job in that body. Doesn't mean we have to like them in our physical bodies or condone their action, but they may be giving us the opportunity to rise into an agency, to our agency, maybe to move us forward together in concert. Should it have to be that way? Oh, I don't think so, but is it that way? It appears to be so. So, big hugs. Oh, I'm so glad it helped. Oh, when your child got cancer and you didn't think you could cope and you could and you did. Big hugs. Big hugs, Jen. Absolutely. Oh, about your childhood. You needed to hear it. Oh, I'm so glad. Yeah. Took a long time to get here. This isn't something everybody, you know, we're not born with it. Well, we might be born with it, but we certainly aren't going to be here without a lot of thought, a lot of work. So, yeah. Absolutely. And we get to shit change our roles up. If you decide, well, I don't like this role. I'm going to take on this other role. You can. You know, I had a funny epiphany back in 2020. I was meditating on Pluto. And this thought popped into my head. All you had to do was live to 2020. And I thought back in a snarky kind of way. I was like, <laughs> that would have been nice to know. And the thought that shot back immediately was, you would have never believed it. And I was like, eh, fair enough. It's true. I wouldn't have believed it. I wouldn't have believed it when I was 25. I wouldn't have believed it at 18. I wouldn't have believed it at 35. Um, so these are all really important things to remember. You don't need to be scared as a Virgo sign. There's nothing to be afraid of. Your Libra moon's gone through the hardest part. It's not going to struggle any more than it has. Gemini rising, you've already been through things. You don't have to worry about it. You don't need to be worried about Saturn, guys. You're fine. 
You have three Aquarius placements. You're ready for this? I bet it's going to give you a little relief. But it got you ready for the Pluto transits. And you don't even have to think about the Pluto transits. But yeah. What about Aries? You get relief from that. You get relief from Saturn. Um, it depends. But um, Pluto moving into Aquarius gives you two great months, 79 days of a little bit of relief, depending on the placements. Because planets don't aspect the whole time they're in a sign your personal placements okay it's not the whole time i know there are some people who claim to be hellenist astrologers who have been like well the greeks used white orbs they didn't really fuss with it they didn't have the math to fuss with it astrology did progress over time and there's been there's been some misunderstandings in the popular astrology crowd so, yeah. Yeah, just roll with the punches. There you go. Yeah, you should you should have better times. Yeah. Scorpio, sun, moon, and rising. Fourth house, Pisces. Yeah. Well, you're coming towards your Saturn return. By the way, if you guys want to learn more about the Saturn cycle and what a Saturn return actually is, I've got the Saturn return class a recorded class up on my link page in my bio and it's on sale right now. So if you guys want to take advantage of that, go for it. Oh, Mars, Mercury, and Sun. You should feel some relief indeed. <clears throat> being prepped is always better than being scared. Prep is caution. Fear can paralyze us. So just like in Dune, they said fear is the main killer, right? And it's true. So it's it's usually better to be prepared. That's why I give predictions. Okay. I give predictions. Those are for what I think is going to happen in, you know, the mundane events, the everyday events. And then um, I talk about how that can manifest in the personal energy on the podcast, but also in my Patreon as well. So on an individual level, even if the world looks like it's going to hell, you can have a great time. So I laughed, and I laughed, but not in a mean way during 2020, because you see the first 50 years, and I would actually say the first 40 years of my life were beyond crunchy. They were very difficult, extremely difficult, as in I've made eminent psychologists cry with my life story. I wasn't expected to live this long. I was supposed to, according to psychologists in the 80s and 90s, I wasn't supposed to turn out real good. I never ended up being anything they ever said I was gonna be, but so much for them. They didn't know about neuroscience like we know today though, right? But it was very, very difficult. And um, I was so tired of being tired. I was so tired of hurting. I was so tired of the fucking PTSD. I was so tired of the anxiety and the depression. And I was on a spiritual journey. You have no idea how many alternative healing modalities I have learned and am certified in just trying to fix my own damn self to the point where I finally went, I, I had a PhD psychologist. I, I put all these damn modalities together to fix myself. And I had a PhD psychologist monitor my progress so I could verify it. And I did clear zero clinical markers. Yeah, I did. And I'm very proud. I think that's the thing I'm most proud of that I've done in my life. I, I did what I said I was going to do when I was a teenager. I was going to heal myself. It took a long time. And neuroscience was not even close to helpful until like I was in the middle of my healing, that, that last stage of the healing process. It was stages. So this idea that you can just do it like this, you know, no, it can take time. But so many young people, like I read astrology charts for people of all ages. So many people in their twenties have so many more tools than we had available to ourselves. And I watch these people, you know, transmuting their pain into healing and, and, and moving from trauma into wellness. And it's just like, oh my God, I am so happy to see that it isn't taking people 30 freaking years to do it. And so, um, I'm losing my train of thought on that one, but the last 13 years have been really, really good and really, really worth working for. And 
none of us know how long we have on this planet. Yes, we can kind of guess as astrologers, but it's not an exact science. I figure I'm here till my early 80s, maybe. It's rather worth doing. It's rather worth doing. It's worth going through all the crunchy bits because at some point you have perspective and you can look back and it doesn't hurt the same way it used to hurt, right? And you can see how it helped you get to where you are. So, yeah. Me too, I made it turn because I, I was done. I, at 38, I was done. I, when I went to the PhD psychologist with the modality I'd worked so hard to create and I needed help with, I told him, it's heal or, or die. And I'm okay with either one, but I have kids and I don't want to traumatize them. So I'm going to give it a shot. And that is the only reason I'm here. Because life was pain. So, yeah. And it doesn't. It heals. It actually, when you're at a pain point, you're actually closer to healing. Especially emotional pain. You're at a place of healing. So it's just like if you you scratch yourself really bad or you get stitches and they itch while they're healing, that pain is kind of like that. You're close to breaking through, but it's 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 learning to shift it over. So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I could say you're here for a reason. Oh, thank you, Jupiter. Another astrologer was saying that Scorpio rising was going to have issues with relationships, any and all relationships. I don't know what the fuck they're talking about. Why? Because Uranus is in the seventh house at this point. Oh, because the full moon is trying Uranus. That doesn't mean that at all. Don't don't just buy. If somebody says that, that you cannot make a general. Everybody has individual charts. What else is in your chart? Like, what else are your personal placements? How else are things aspecting? Okay. And come on, you're Scorpio rising. You don't get taken out. You don't get to leave. You got to do your time. Sorry. We are indestructible. Whether we like it or not. We just keep coming back. And we keep coming back. And we keep coming back. We can handle a hell of a lot more than we think we can. It's the stories we tell ourselves that shape our perception. So we want to tell our stories to ourselves about ourselves in different ways. But don't buy the negative bullshit when these, these, these wannabe astrologers, they might be students of astrology, but they're not very experienced because notice I try to keep away. I always feel bad if I do a general astrology one for people because I'm just like, oh, I'll do teaching. But yeah, so yeah. Yeah. Well, but you can't hold on. Now, here's the other thing. Relationships take two. Okay. Now, that was my problem. When, when, my, when my first marriage was not going well, I fought so fucking hard for it. To the point where it almost killed me. Sometimes the idea that relationships are forever is a social construct. Human beings are not designed that way. doesn't mean we have to go fuck everything that moves either. But it's that idea that our value, and that was the part, one of the biggest reasons I was fighting for it, is I felt like my value was tied up in the relationship. Like who I was partnered with, how, being partnered, what kind of woman did that make me? You know. Not being able to save it. Oh, God, if I could hug that little girl. <laughs> and yeah, she would be 28 thinking about that. If I could hug her and tell her, it's not you. Right? Yeah. Oh, but Pluto isn't squaring off with everybody's ascendant or descendant. 
It's not. It doesn't start squaring your ascent. These aspects do not happen until they are within orb. Okay? Orbs. Orbs are the distance to making an aspect. They are not, not transiting the whole time. I've got a 12 degree ish Scorpio rising. Pluto moving into Aquarius on the 23rd isn't anywhere close to squaring off with my ascendant or my descendant. And it doesn't mean those relationships will go away. They can actually level up and be better. Squares are not always bad. They're about decisions. Okay? And maybe we need to end the idea that your value and your worth is attached to a relationship. You are valuable without one. If, if you're lessening yourself to stay in something so you feel like you're real, my God, you're doing yourself a disservice. Make them level up. And if they can't move on, because they're sure as hell somebody else better. I can tell you, it hurt to lose my first husband. It hurt. It hurt that he could not choose his wellness or his family. I lived on just fine. And I've had a good, good life. Do I wish he would have made other choices? Oh, absolutely. Have I found other love? Absolutely. More than once. We need to let go of the social constructs. Pluto in Aquarius is about restructuring society and it has never been in our consciousness before. Okay. All right. Go listen to my podcast, the Awake Space Astrology Podcast. It's free. Um, I, you know, I am making the content as I go along. I just haven't had time because I'm doing some other cool projects right now that take up my attention and my energy. And I also have had Pluto opposite my sun and my Mercury for the last two and a half months, three months. And so I wasn't feeling very creative. I was recalibrating my energy. I was just kind of really taking care of myself and making a few. So I'll finish the sun and then I'll do the moon. Thank you so much. And then I'll do the moon probably. I might Because I did Mercury already. Maybe, and I've already done Venus. So if you look through my playlists, so I'll probably do like the moon and Mars. But yeah. Yeah. Oh, the cats. <laughs> cats and dogs tend to be attracted in. And, and babies. Babies. I've got some patrons who, when they come in for coffee with Lori or even a reading with me, um, their little ones will be like insisting and in being in on it. So, and for babies too. But yeah. If you go to the link in my bio, I have a lot of astrology resources, learning tools, classes, recorded classes, my podcast, and how to book with readings with myself and the astrologers I've trained. Absolutely. Oh, you're having a baby nephew. That's so nice. Uh, study Buckminster Fuller. If you're looking for anti-capitalist, I think people don't understand capitalism, though, because we haven't had capitalism. It died in the 90s. We've been in fascism and uh, corporate socialism for a long time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Bucky. I found Bucky when I was like in end of middle school. I was in the old Carnegie library and I found his work. They don't even teach about his social theories anymore. They only teach about the engineering. How convenient. He was one of the first people to push for a UBI. Hmm. Um, it depends on where your moon is. If, if it's the same degree as the full moon, which is six degrees, then you're having your lunar return. So I talk a lot about it. Um, 
I'm actually drinking my own coffee. I'm just reusing the cup. I reuse the cups until they fall apart. <laughs> I just hate throwing throwing things out that can be reused. I know. So. But the thing is, is I don't remember the solid ones. So I reuse. I'll use them in my garden too. I'll start little things in them. And... Which by the way, I got a new little hydroponic garden. Thus the pink glow. Because that's actually the grow lights on my little hydroponic garden. The watercress and the cucumbers are growing nicely. They've sprouted very, very lovely. So far, so good. I'm looking forward to it. But anyway, guys, um, I'll be uh, I'm cleaning up my YouTube channel and we're going to grow that a little bit more. Speaking of this app, I'm kind of I, I don't believe this app is going to go away. I have its astrology chart, um, but I am moving us. Uh, I'm not moving us away, but I'm moving into doing more there. I'll announce it when I get there. You guys can follow my channel. I don't know that I have that linked up. I think it's linked up on my link page. Um, and we have a new IG. I'm not running that one though, but I have somebody running it for me. So I have Woke Astrologer and Astro Lori uh, adding a clapper. Like clap on, clap off. But yeah. Oh, I thank you with your laundry. That's awesome. No, the House hasn't voted on the bill. The House hasn't voted on the bill. It was voted out of a committee. It hasn't hit the whole House. The whole House has not voted on it. And it can't go to Biden to be signed until it passes the Senate. Uh, you know, Schoolhouse Rock. Okay, Schoolhouse Rock. It came out of committee. It has not been voted on by the House, nor has it been voted on by the Senate. And it would have to then go to Biden. Um, when I look at... Um, But yeah, right. More schoolhouse rock. So it was. It, they ju it was just a committee that voted on it. Um, I don't think this app is going away. When I look at its chart, it's contentious. It has to fight for its survival. But yeah, yeah. So it's in, and and some of it's a distraction. I think all social media is going to be interrupted. I was telling people this last year. I said, if you have a business, you want to go a little bit. Uh, Two thousand six in your marketing, you want to build your email list. You want to have yourself out in a few other places. So I'm just kind of getting us ready for that, just in case. I think things may change with this. But I'm not expecting, I, I honestly think it's a huge distraction away from other things, you know, so. Well, I'm actually going to pop off You're. what are you supposed to feel as an Aquarius? You'll find out, won't you? You got to observe how you feel. Don't let other people tell you how to feel. Observe how you're going to feel. Okay. You caught up on Spotify. Awesome. There you go. Your mental health. Oh, only telehealth. It, you'll, your phone will be ringing off the hook. There'll be people, anybody who doesn't have a good handle on their own consciousness um, and is learning to be more um, responsive is, is may struggle a little bit tomorrow. Um, it could bring up some stuff. So be prepared for that phone to ring early. So, and expect people to have real epiphanies on their healing process though, too. They may hit like, I like to call it the pain wall. Uh, I'm, I've actually been a professional astrologer for three decades. So I'm, you know, obviously you're always a student, but I am a professional astrologer who's been practicing professionally since 1998. So I'm 53 years old. I've been doing this a very long time. So, I teach it. 
So, and I've studied under some of the best astrologers in the world. So I've studied under Robert Hand. I've studied, studied under Joanne Wickenberg, uh, Jeffrey Wolf Green, um, taking classes. I don't think you'll remember it. It was a long time ago, but under um, Jeffrey uh, Levine, Rick Levine and Jeffrey Jar. Um, yeah. So I've had very, very good teachers and mentors all along the way. But anywho, I am going to go to bed. Take care. Oh, yeah, I'm Gen X.